Shalom Aleichem, everybody. Welcome. It is Wednesday, and it is Chav Zayin. Thomas? Now, Wednesday, I don't give classes in Beis Medrash and Nashim Rabbanu 770, so I made the decision that I'm going to teach a Maimir. But I did promise to come on around noon, and now it's 5 o'clock, which means that I lost my Israeli audience. I should apologize to myself, because Reitz uh, Mimasha about Ha... A potter, a sima, a gala, a gala, a sima potter, a sima, a sima, a sima, a shabala, a bias, a sima, a oni, a oni, a sima, balha bias. It's just technical uh, things uh, held me back from giving the class earlier. So here we are. As they say in Yiddish, Bessa, Speta, they did Kemon. It's better to do it late than not to do it at all. Um, I want to begin. This is not, if you, if you, if you looked at my WhatsApp groups, I sent out the PDF. Could be in the hall, put it up. This is a Maimah from 1952 from Tavshin Yud Beis, and it's a Maimah of Shlach, and we're holding Pinchas. So I guess I'll start with this, that there's a, a Shail in the Gemara. When you have a Rav in the Talmud, a teacher and a student. So there's a special Gzeres HaKosov, which is called Ba'olav Imei. Ba'olav Imei That if you uh, borrow something from your friend, and a Shail is called Anor Shaloi, and therefore it's Chayiv in an Einzin, but if ba'olavime yeshni ime b'shas shayla, so lo yishalm. It's a gzeir It's it's in other words, it's not something that you can necessarily explain logically. If when you borrowed an object from somebody else, that person was also working for you, so you're part even from minus. You're part he says it could even be from shia, but you're sure part from minus. And we can name of aved. It's a special gzeir sakosov. Ba'olavime. The gemara says gzeir sakosov. Ba'olavime applies to shem echid and shem esachid as well. So the gemara has a shayla at Rav and a Talmud. A teacher and a student. So who's the balabayas and who's the shayel? In other words, is the teacher the chooser of what they learn? And therefore, when the student borrows something from him, it's shayla babaylim. Or is the student in charge of what they learn? And therefore, when the teacher borrows from the student, that would be shayla babaylim and not the other way around. And the Gemara's answer is that it depends what time of year is. The time of Yom Tif, then the students are the balabas and the teacher is the shayel. But not during Yom Tif, the teacher is the balabayas and the students are the shayel. Because not during Yom Tif, the teacher gets to choose what to teach. So I'm teaching you, and you're not coming on to do me a favor. Obviously, if you're listening to the shir live or after the recording is done, you're doing it because you want to learn chesidus. And of course, I'm very happy and delighted and flattered and honored that you're choosing to learn chesidus with me. But no one is doing this out of the goodness of their heart. No one comes to learn in the middle of an afternoon because you want to do some rabbi who's bored a favor. But I get to choose what we learn. I get to choose what we learn. And this is how it breaks down. Um, one of the things that I've had the incredible schos to teach over the course of my years as a teacher have been the Maimadam of the Rebbe, of our Rebbe. The Nasi of our generation. Like the Rebbe writes in letters, Ein lanu ela. We have one Rebbe. And the idea that we're learning his Torah, his Hasidus, is an incredible schuss for us. And um, I don't know how many years ago it is by now, 13 or 14 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, we started a regime in Beis Medrash, 770, in addition to what I was doing with the boys in Yeshiva, to learn the Maimorim of the Rebbe al the Maimorim of the Rebbe in order. We went backwards. We did first Nun Aleph and Mem Tes and Mem Ches, then Mem Zayin, then Mem Vav, then Mem Hay, then Mem Dalad, then Mem Gimel, then Mem Beis, then Mem Aleph, then Mem, then Lamed Tes, then Lamed Ches, then Lamed Zayin. This is our twelfth year. I'm counting with my fingers here. And we learned every single mimer of the Rebbe, going backwards. We're almost done with Lamed Zayin. In addition, with the boys in Yeshiva, I went forward. I went from Yud Aleph up. And till about Yud Zayin, I think, I have about half to my modem each year. Then the situation in yeshiva changed. I was no longer able to do that, or we chose to do something different. So we have uh, quite a few maimorim of the Rebbe already available on InsideChasidus.org. People are always asking me, did you do this maimorim, this maimorim? And usually they're asking me because they can't find it, which means we didn't do it. And Friday, we're going to learn a maimorim from Lamed Zayin, from our regular year, which is where we're holding, which is uh, a maimorim of Eshchidosh. 
Why you would the Chodesh be the Shabbat the Shabbat Yavuk of Basel Shlach? But that's going to be the matter we're going to be learning. But Ezer Hashem is Baruch Vyasala this coming Friday. Um, and of course this year Tovshin Pei Aleph is exactly the same arrangement as it was in Tovshin Lamed Zayin 1977, so it works out perfectly. This Shabbos is also the Chodesh for us, so the Rebbe said, "Amaim Vahayu Mid the Chodesh Bechatche." We're going to learn Amaim on Friday. But if we're going to learn an extra on Wednesday, I get to pick what? And here's my decision. Online, at insatchsiris.org, we have every single maimit, every single maimit from Tafshin Yudaf 1951. Could be some of them are not complete, could be some of them are done very quickly. The one bottom that I gave in Yeshiva, depending on the group of Talmidim, could be more concentrated and less concentrated. And from Tafshin Yud Bay, 1952, I'm missing three. The maimit of Shlach, the Maim of Yud Bistamuz and uh, the Maim of Ed Rosh Hashanah to Yud Gimel. So I'm hoping to go forward, to be Mashlim. In other words, we're going backwards from the end to the beginning, and we're going to go up from the beginning towards the end. So this week I'm going to teach Shlach. It, Hashem is going to give us help and Koyach and Schus. Next week we'll do Yud Bistamuz. So today we're learning a Maim of Shlach. It's a few weeks behind. We're holding Namatas Masse. It's a Shlach, Shlach, Kedach, Chukas, Bolok, Pinchas, Matas Masse. It's a month and a half ago. But it's Taira. And the way Taira works is Kala Isaac, but Taira Ki'ilu. Taira is always on time. There's something between Taira Mitzvahs. The Taira is called Chaye Olam. It's not like Tefillah, which is connected to time. You dive in for what you need when you need it. Like we're saying Talamata in the winter, we're saying Brachi in the summer. Taira, you can learn any piece of Taira at any time, and it's always the right time. So we're learning a Maimir Chasidis on Parsha Shlach, even though it's already, uh, as the Rebbe says, Noch for July. It's already officially summer. It's after 4th of July, which was a Sunday, I think. But nevertheless, we're learning this Maimir of Shlach. This Maimir of Shlach is a classic. It's a typical Maimir. I mean, there's a lot of Maimir. The Kutatayr on Shlach, I think, is the longest of any Parsha. And of course, a lot of it's about the Meraglim. But one of the discussions you have in the Gutteta on Shlach is Lahovan Yinyan Hanesochim to explain the idea of libation, of pouring wine on the Mizbeach. Which means practically every time a carbon was brought in the base of Mikdash, along with the meat, there was flour and oil and wine. This was not brought with a chatos, with a sin offering, or with an ashram, which is also a sin offering, but it was brought, brought with an oilah, and it was brought with a shlamim, and it was brought with a taida, which is a form of a shlamim. You brought along a mincha and a nesach, flour, oil, and wine. In practical terms, this is like eating meat in a meal. So you eat it with bread, that's the flour and the oil, and with wine to be misameh, to bring joy into the meal. Which, of course, explains why when you bring a chatas or an ashram, since there's sin offerings, you don't have the mincha and the nesach. And in Pasha Shlach, you have what's called Pasha Sanesach, the section of the table that deals with libations, these nesach. The flour, the oil, and the wine. Why is it in Pasha Shlach? So in Pshutam Shaldvarim, Pasha Shlach describes the, uh, the spies returning and saying that we can't go to Israel. And of course, all the Jewish people agree with the spies, and Nebuchadnezzar gets very upset, and Meshach gets very upset. And the end of the story was the Menagrim themselves are killed. And all of Kal Yisrael is told that they're going to be 40 years in the Midbar, and they're not going to go into Eretz Yisrael until this generation dies out. And of course, what follows is that the Jewish people go up, they decide, they decide to grow up anyway, and Mesha says, don't go, and they go up and they're killed by the Knanim, Kashe Yaksana Advoidim, Ad Chormo, and so on. Meaning it doesn't work out well, right? Pasha Shlach is not a happy Pasha for the most part. The Menagla Maskrimi want to stay in the Midbar, and they essentially get what they want. They end up staying in the Midbar, but they spend 40 more years in the Midbar. And Tapcha Misharamat and Lavaz Yehemi Avayusham. So the story essentially adds up to the Jewish people are supposed to go in Dead Israel, and the plans are changed. They spend 40 years in the desert. And then comes Pasha Nesach. So Rashi says, that the continuation between Pashas Nesachim and the story of the Meraglim is Kan Bisran right after the end of the story of the spies and they're told to turn around and go back 
because they're going to spend 40 years in the desert. They're told, you may spend 40 years in the desert, but you will eventually go into Eretz Yisrael. He was, he, he was Mavasir. He gave them the good news that they're eventually going to go into Eretz Yisrael. So the Pasuk begins, Ki Savei Yuel Eretz Meishvei Seich. So the simple continuity, the simple Hemshech, is that after the story of the Meraglim, where the Jewish people were punished, that the delay, that going at Israel is going to be delayed by 40 years, he says, but you're going to get there. That's the Pashat of Shad. But in some Kretsch, as they say, in Chassidish jargon, in Chassidish Arum. But Chassidus reads much more into this. That the mention of the Mincha and the Nesachim, after the story of the Meraglim, is not only a besura, a good piece of news, about going into Eretz Yisrael, because Bisran she can so he promised them they can go into Eretz Yisrael. But that there's something about the Mincha and the Nesach which is consistent with the whole theme of going into Eretz Yisrael. Said in other words, there is something about a carbon without a Mincha and a Nesach which would be consistent with the Meraglim. And there is something about a carbon with the Mincha and Nesach which is consistent with going into Eretz Yisrael. And as you'll see in this Maimir, a carbon without a Nesach is called a Ratzay Belish Shave. You're running to Hashem, you're going in one direction and you're not coming back. And a carbon with the mincha and nesach has a ratzah with the shave. And that's the oimek of it, right? In the midbar, which is where the meraglim hope to stay, you have a ratzah belish shave. When you come into Eretz Yisrael, and in Eretz Yisrael, the avayda is shuv along with ratzah, so you're going to bring a carbon mincha and nesach because the mincha and the nesach, this is the shuv of every single carbon. This is basically how Hasidus is going to explain the Pasha of the Nesachim. And this is how Hasidus explains the smichos right after the story of the Meraglim with the story of the Mincha and the Nesach because the Meraglim wanted Ratzay Belishuv, Et Yisrael is Ratzay Vishuv, a carbon is Ratzay, the Mincha and the Nesach is the Shuv of the carbon. That's the continuity, that's the flow. That's the Hemshech Advarim. The Maimorim, going back to the Alter Rebbe, when they bring the Sugit, they connect it to Kol HaKere Krishma Belay Tfilin. It's as if he brought a min a carbon belay mincha v'zadach belay nesach. That the rotzei v'shev, which is a carbon and a mincha and a nesach, in the life of a person is krishma and tefillin. Krishma is rotzu, tefillin is shuv. One without the other is like carbon without a nesach. And the Chazal also say, "Kol akei the krishma tefillin made the shekab yatzmei." You're going to see this in Mitzvah Hashem inside, on page uh, shin, on page shin yud zayin. That Krishna without tefillin is made in Shekhar Biyatsme. Carbon without Mincha, which is compared to tefillin, Krishna without tefillin is therefore also made in Shekhar Biyatsme. These are all the ideas that the Alter Rebbe presents in his Maim and explaining of Mincha and Nesach. In short, the Pashas and the Sachim follows the story of the spies, not just because Bisan she consul others, because he's promising them that they're going to go into Eretz Yisrael, but because it has to do with the nature of the avoid that the Yidna are going to do in Eretz Yisrael. Now, we're going to learn this Maimir for the most part in order, except that we're going to learn Sif Beis and Gimel, and then we're going to go back and read the, the questions. We're going to read about Karbanis, Sif Beis. We're going to read about the Nesachim, Sif Gimel. Then we're going to go back and learn the beginning of the Maimir, and then we're going to go straight. I kept on questioning whether it was necessary to do this. I just think it's the right way to do it. Let's first learn the optimum, the ideal idea of a Karban Natsuratsu, and the, the Nesachim that just shave, and then we'll go back and learn the Maimir, which connects uh, the Mincha and the Nesach to uh, going into Eretz Yisrael. I'm, not, I'm still not certain if I'm going to be able to do this in one class or I'm going to have to divide this into two classes. It depends how the Maimah goes. It's a seven-page Maimah, which can either be considered very long or very short. I, I don't think this is a very long Maimah. Uh, we'll see how the clock holds up and how my Koya holds up. I'd like to do it in one sitting. If I don't, I'll have to stop at some point and then continue tonight to Mitzvah Hashem. Uh, but I'm not sure. So I want to jump right into the Maimed, okay? And I'm going to start with Patek Bay, which is on page Shin Yudalad. If you have a text, uh, you can follow us inside. Before you can talk about coming into Etisol and Nesachim, we have to explain first the difference between Karbonus and Nesachim. What's the difference in a carbon, which is burning up the meat of the Mizbeach and pouring the wine? I know, Hefresh, but based on Yarm Shekabon is good for when a person brings a carbon. In the carbon itself, you have both a carbon and a nesach. You have the part which the mizbeach eats, and the spilling of the wine. What's the difference between these two parts and the carbon itself? 
and our peace a yuvan, and by understanding the difference between carbon and Eshech, we'll understand that there is Inyan, and Sochim Shayech, that the idea of pouring wine is connected especially to Eretz Meshvesechem Dafka, to going into Eretz Yisro. Inyan, Bazem. The Rebbe begins to explain what are the carbon. I guess I should give you a little quick comment. The Rebbe has a Sikh, and the Kutta Sikh is Kayak Lamed Beis, and Vayikra, where the Rebbe asks the question, why by Karbonus does it say, it's a Rashi Sikh actually, <coughs> why by Karbonus does it say, Nachas Ruch Lofone Shemar Tivinas Ritzani? Why Dafka by Karbonus does it say that the Ebish gets Nachas Ruch and bring a carbon? There's so many other mitzvahs. Why Dafka by carbon? And the Rebbe has a mud in the Kavod, because carbon means sacrifice. I give with no intent of getting back. Since a carbon is a sacrifice, I give it to no intent of getting back, you say, Nachas Ruach Lofone. Because the concept of a carbon is going away from here and burning up an Elokos. Period. That's it. Says the Rebbe, the Hine, and Akabanus, Nikro Bishem Esh, Kabanus are called fire. Like it says in the Pasuk, Vasisem Isha. And it also says, Kabanil Achmeli Isha. If Inyan her Eishu, we know what fire means. Three lines in the bottom of a page in Yudalat. Shatevi Laos, Mamata Lamaila, fire is rising from below to above. Okay, do I should have a chilik when you say the Esh, how do I say this? There are four elements. Earth and water are going down. Wind is considered going laterally from side to side, even though there's, of course, temperature effects expansion. But its idea is not to go upwards. The Ilu Teva Esh, last words on page Shin Yudala, the nature of fire is Lale Islamal to ascend upwards. Behind what this means on top of Shintas Vovna, Shinyan Aliyah, Milmata Lamailam. The phenomena of physically going from a lower place to a liar, higher place. It's in physical things. That's B'yasei Da'esh. Everything physical is heavy. Everything physical has a mass, a weight, a density. And therefore, everything physical is going down towards the center of gravity, to what's bigger than it. The physical exception to that rule is fire. It's a physical thing, but it's ascending. It's going up. Wherever you put fire, it's rising up. So physically, fire represents the concept of ascent, while all other physical things either represent falling down or at least staying in the same latitude. Fire physically is to go up. And that's why Kabbanas Nikri B'Shemesh, Kabbanas are called fire. Lefish Inyana Kabbanas Salom, Ulmata Lamal, the content of carbon is to go upwards. And the Rebbe continues three lines in the page in Tezvav, Inyi said this notion of Chol, like Kabbanas is an old Kabbanas. It says in the Pasuk, Vasisim Isha La Hashem, you're bringing a fire to Kaddish Baruch when you're bringing an oil or a zevach. Oil is a carbon which is Kalal Hashem, completely eaten by the Mizpeach. And zevach is any Kalal Hashem, is not eaten by Hashem, it's eaten mostly by the host, by the Balabayas. And even a zevach is also called Isha La Hashem, which is, means Ali, all carbonists, the concept of a carbon is to raise it from below to above. So the first idea is carbonus are called fire, and fire is rising up. Now goes number two. Number two is so interesting. And the reason it's interesting is inconsistent with so many of my modern we've learned. Shame, chakabonus asks from the crime, bishame, just like fire, carbonus themselves are called fire. Like it says, vasisim isha, hinigam, amadrega, lamailash, bamagia, carbon, the place on high where the carbon reaches and touches. Nikras, bishame, isha is also called fire. Like it says, lachmeli isha, eshali, which goes on malochim. And particularly Srafim. That Srafim are the Tnuha Shalaliyah, they're going upwards. Right? This is Moirindik, right? Karbon ilach with the Ishai, in Tafesh Bem Gimel, in the Rabbanachi Pasach, and in many other Maimorim. They bring this Pasach as Karbon ilach with the Ishai, and they bring Yesh Mefarshim. That means the Chaykim say that Ishai goes on Malach. Right? They say in the Maimorim, Ishai goes on Malach, which are called Srafim. Even though if you look at the Rambam, the Rambam writes that Isha means the Malochim, they're cut off the they're the lowest level of Maloch. But most places, when you learn Hasidus about Karbonas, we don't agree with this, Yesh Mefosh. We don't say that the Karbonas are for the food of Malochim. We say Karbonas is food for the Ebishter himself. Rayanas irayasi panasasi, right? Pischuli achesi irayasi, yanasi is amasi. Tamasi, rayasi panasasi. There's a Pasuk, and I'm not, I don't remember the Pasuk, it's Pasuk, Shira Shirim. Dimisicha Rayasi. I forgot how the Pasuk begins, but the Yidna called the Rayan, they give the Abish to Bazainis. So Chasidus typically, when it brings the concept of Isha, it does not accept the Yeshma Farshim that it goes on the Malach. But this Maimer does. These are based off the little details in my modem that many people overlook that create contradictions in my modem. They create dynamics, complications in my modem. 
and they create, you know, the famous Lashon of Rashi, Adover Alzeh Eini Emel Dar Sheini. We're learning a Maimer, and the Rebbe is insisting in this Maimer, said that Ishi means Malochem, that are called Srafim, even though in so many Maimorim it says exactly the opposite. It's not a Kasha, because it's not a Lochel Amaisa, only a Lochel Amaisa you have to Paskin. If it's not a Lochel Amaisa, it's Eilu Ve'Eilu Divide Lekim Chayim. But it's just interesting how this Maimer goes in a different direction than the classic Hasidic insight into Karbonas, and we say the Karbonas is Lechem Ta'akadosh Baruch and here we're saying it's lach mil ishe for the malachim that are called srafim. Now, ish fire is going up. It says malachim that are going up. But in one moment he's going to say something that looks contradictory. The hine. The malachim gufa amongst angels themselves. Nikraim b'shem aimdim. Srafim, malachim called fire, are actually called standing still. First we said they're going up, then we say they're standing still. Like it says in Chesidus of the Pesach, in Sat Lacham Halacham in Aimdim Me'ela, that... Malachim are called Oimdim. Now, usually when we contrast Oimdim to Mahalchem, Mahalchem means Neshamas Yisro. Here we're translate, contrasting Mahalchem to Oimdim. Mahalchem could mean Malachim that are called Chayas. Vadayin Tarachiyin, Ktas. But certainly Srafim are called Oimdim. And he explains, because they should look at the different levels of Neshamas. Malachim. There are Malachim that are called Chayas, they're constantly in motion. They're not saying they're shaved. And Malachim that are called Srafim, that are called Oimdim, like it says in the Pasuk, Srafim, Oimdim, Mimale. And standing still in this maimer, it is considered on a higher level than being in motion. Even though in other maimer, when we compare and contrast neshamas to malachim, and we say that malachim are standing still, and the shamas are called mahalchim, there's a mailin mahalach. He was saying it the other way around. Malachim that are called oimdim standing still are on a higher level than malachim which are called chayes that are ratzay v'shev, which is the opposite of being still. And he explains why this is. I'm on page shintas love exactly middle of the page. Near the number thirteen, but in Yemazah, the reason why Srafim are standing still and Chayes are in motion, and the standing still of Srafim is considered higher than the being motion of the Chayes. As Chayes is Beilam Yitzira, Chayes Akedesh or Yitzira, Fanim or Nasiya, Srafim are in Bria, and Beilam Yitzira is in Yenamidus, emotions, which is idea of Hispoilus. Hispoilus means you don't act, you react. You don't proact, you react. Mides react to something other. Elama Yitzir is a reaction to something else, which is Elama Briyeh Bepashtas. Says the Rebbe, Shezehu Inyan Hashinuyim. The concept of Elama Yitzir, which is emotions, and most more importantly, reactive and responsive emotions, means change. Which is why you have the change, the constant change of Ratzi Vesheva being in motion, hither and thither, and they're not aimed and they're not standing still. Standing still means in a perpetual state of bittle. And the Sraf, Mashaykin, Asraf, Mebechin, Asamida, Tamida, the Sraf, Malachim, Gold, Sraf, called standing still, the Loishina, they don't move. Because through the Elam, Abriya, we have Chachmanas, Chachmas, Ebinas, Ebidaite, Chabad, of the Abishas and Briya. Like it says in Zay, and to Kunne Zay, Eme, Law, Makana, Lobo, Kursaya, that Elam, Abriya is the world of Bina. But the Chayim, Tamad, Bamida, that's a Malachim, called Sraf, Mar, standing in one place. Not they're standing in one place because they lack life, but they're standing in one place because Nisraf, and Machmas, Abitl, Shalem, they're being burnt up in their Bitl. So the malachim called Srafim standing still is in a higher madrega. The malachim called Chayis Ratzi V'Shev. And the Amid is connected to the idea of Eish, to the principle of fire. Is it not true that we find by Chayis it also called being in motion? I'm sorry, standing still. So the Rebbe answers, Yeah, Chayis HaKedish can stand still, but they stand still when the malachim above them stop. I didn't look up the Pasuk in Yecheskel, but if you're familiar with Yecheskel, he says, When the Har Malachim are raised, the Law Malachim follow them, and when the low Har Malachim go down, the Law Malachim follow them as well. So the, I, I wrote on the margin that al when the Srafim stand in a state of Amida, they affect that the Chayish should be in a state of Amida, but the, the Chayish by themselves are not safe shave. When Bria shines into Yitzira, kinds of the Chayis Akedish, then they stand still, they become battle. As they are by themselves, since Malachim called Chayis are not in that world, they're not standing still, and they're constantly changing. So change in this Maimir is a Chesar. Right? Usually we say Mahalach and Aymid, Mahalach is better than Aymid. Because Mahalach goes on in the Shaman, and Aymid goes on in the Malach. Here it's Faket. The oimid is better than the mahalach. Oimid means total bittel. The mahalach is lesser bittel than that. The chayes are lesser bittel, and the srafim are a greater bittel. 
three lines in the bottom page Shintas Vavazel Masha Kosov Lach Mila Isha. I just said the Pshat and the Pasuk that the Karbonas are bred for the Malachim called Isha. That goes on Malachim Bachlal, Malachim eat Karbonas. O Befrat Allah Srafim Shehem. Tamar Rebbechin Asali, especially those Malachim called Srafim that are in one place. What is that one place? They're constantly rising upwards, which is the concept of Aish. And again, I'm repeating, this is very inconsistent, L'cha'era, with what you have in so many other Maimorim. That the Karbanas are for the Eibishter, this Maimit is different. This says Maimit is going to the Malachim, the Karbanas go for the, for the Malachim. And of course, certainly there's a way of resolving that they shouldn't be contradictory. Perhaps you don't even need a Rebbe, you can just think a little bit, you'll understand that there's different aspects. But this Maimit is focusing on this aspect, that the Karbanas is a Leah to Elam Abriah, which is connected to the, Nisham, to the Malachim. And we, so to speak, give chayes to the malachim, which in the malachim called tzrafim, this expresses itself in being a condition of being standing still. In them, so in other words, that kolos in a karbonus, the idea of a carbon altogether. Hey, na karbonus atzma, both the karbonus themselves that are called fire. Hey, na mokam she'elu magir, as well as the source to which the karbonus are lifted, as both ash. Kabbanas down here are called ishai, and the karbonus go by to tzrafim, which is also called ishai. Turn to page in tezayin. Showing in our law, you see we get to that kale. This is going up and going out of vessels. So the concept of carbon is ratzu to go away from this world into a higher world, and the malacham called tzrafim. This ratzu is in a state of amida. Not that they're stuck in their uh, in their ratzu, but the ratzu is so constant, so perpetual that they're in an amida of ratzu. And that's the first thing you have to know about a carbon, that the concept of a carbon is ratzu going up from below to above, and that's why it's called fire. And then he adds, Vali as you had begin the shame of it to where do the carbon ascend, even though the carbon is being macrafa nef shabahamis, it goes still havaya, like it says Isha La Havaya. And the Rebbe says, Inyan Shame of Vaya Zamalamaya Ilamis, because Avaya is Mahava. And a day Yali Bachalma de Zad Bahina Shame Avaya, the fact that through a carbon you reach till Havaya, you reach even higher than Avaya. Which is the idea of a Raza the Korban, uh, which reaches Raza the Insafe, the secret of the carbon, not as the secret of the Aiden Safe. So there's two levels here. The first level that a person brings a carbon, the carbon goes up to the maloch. Then it goes up to Shema Vaya, which creates all of the world. And then it goes even higher than Shema Vaya, which is the source of all the worlds. And this is the Pshat and the Zoya, Rosa, the Korban, Eila, Rosa, the Insafe, the secret of Kabbalah, goes up to the secret of Shema Vaya. In other Maimar, they talk about Kabbalah having various steps. You sacrifice the animal soul, you bring the person close. You make the person have sacrifice. Two atzilas, from below atzilas, two atzilas, in atzilas, and from atzilas, higher than atzilas. How this is going to play out in this moment, I don't know. But the general idea is that the union of a carbon is to ascend upwards, first of all, to the madrega of the srafim, second of all, to the madrega of sheim avaya, that carbon is at the sheim avaya, like it says in Sforim, and thirdly, to higher than avaya, which is called Raza the Yainsef. I know this means, char carbon, it's atzma, the carbon is themselves, al yasum, yad bishkin, sheim avaya, they go up to avaya. But ultimately, they go up to all levels and they go out of all the boundaries of all limitations of vessels. Nas Ali Adraza the Ain Safe, Nam the Karban go up till Atsilas, it goes till the secret of Ain Safe, which is higher than Atsilas. And that's the Dikaraza the Kobane Raza the Ain Safe, only the Raz, in order for a carbon to not only reach Atsilas, but for a carbon to reach Alukut, which is higher than Atsilas, you have to know the secret, know the Raz. And then you go up to the Madrega of Raz, the secret of Ain Safe. So karbanes are fire. They're going upwards. They're going away. They're a phenomenon associated with sacrifice of self. That's why they're called fire. That's why they feed the malachim that are called ishim. That's why it's up till havaya. It goes up even higher than shem havaya and so on and so forth. This is a carbon. So a carbon is a sacrifice. A carbon is a sura mikan from to go away from here to go there. Or to say it in practical terms, we live in a world the world is the opposite of godliness on some level and in many ways it's the enemy of godliness and we're trying to get out of here a carbon is an endeavor it's an exercise of going away from here and going over there till srafim which el mabriya till havaya which is el matzilas and then raza the ain't safe which is even higher than shem havaya okay slicha we're moving on Amnam inyan hanesach along with a carbon there's a nesach, there's a libation, this pouring wine. Somehow the mincha, the flour, and the oil, even though they actually one of them is beach, are in a similar category, and I'm not sure exactly how, but certainly the spilling of wine is the opposite of ras. And the Rebbe explains how. 
who hamshacha lamata dafka. The concept of a nesach has to bring godliness from a higher level to a lower level, which is hey pecha karbonus is the exact opposite of a carbon. Shen yadim hu halah. The carbon is about ascent. Moreover, halah yilamay lamay lebeyes. The ascent is tilde madreig of srafim, tilde madreig of avaya, tilde madreig of razadein seiv. The concept of what you wine that you're pouring is exactly the opposite. The idea is to pour the wine that it should go as low as possible. How low? Lower and lower still. Add the very lowest place, which is the idea of Nesach. That you pour the wine on the Mizbech on top, and it would spill over the side till the Yesoid. And on the Yesoid, there were holes. Basically, it was a drain. And it went down through those holes into the sheetin, which were underneath the base of Mikdosh. They poured it on top of the Mizbech. They would go into the two nostrils, which sat by the Yeshayid, where the, the wine would spill down into those two nostrils. And that they were howl over Yerdim. And that the Haim goes down till the Tahaim. Tahaim means the abyss, the center of the earth. Shat'eim, the mystical concept of Tahim is Hamakam Hayes Atahta Bayes at the lowest levels. And mystically it's Makam Mayim Tahte in the place of the lower waters, like it says in the Pasuk, the Inya Vihiro Kiya. Now when you say Maim al Yaim and Maim Tahtainim, normally Maim al Yaina means the water which is permanently above the earth, a hundred miles above the earth. And Maim Tahtainim means the waters in the ocean. Here, Maim al Yainim could mean the clouds. Mayim al Yenim could even mean the water in the lakes and the rivers and in the oceans. Mayim Tachtena means the subterranean water. That's the way the Rebbe seems to be spinning it. Kedis, the Medish, it's written in the Medish. Shabbatil, Laha, Yoel, Mayim, Bemayim, and David, Shakhtena, the world, all waters were together. And of course, Yukavu, Amayim, Amokam, Machad, Vetehroha, Yabosh, and David, separated land from the sea and the higher waters and the lower waters, etc. Vaidei, Hamayim, Yehira, Kiyah, Betech, Hamayim, Mesha made a division in the waters from higher to lower. So Ma'im al Yenim al Lamal, the higher waters became even higher, and Ma'im Tachtenim Yardu, the lower waters became even lower. Ada to him, they went not just on the surface of the earth, but beneath the surface of the earth, and what's called the abyss. And the idea of a Nesach is you pour wine, not just that it should reach the waters on the land, but it should go into the Tahim. So Yerdim Ada to him went over down to the Tahim, which represents the idea of Amshach al Amata Biyasa, the lowest bringing down of anything. It's not just that the wine's purpose is not to rise, but to descend. They only remain in the same plane. They're meant to go lower than themselves. They're not just going from a higher level to a lower level in a relative way. They're meant to go down to the very lowest levels, which is the place of Mayim Tachtenim, which is considered the Tahim. And the Rebbe brings the Mayim Chazal, Mayim Tachtenim Bech, and Abin Lom Hevi Kodam Al Kadisha, the lower waters are crying. So again, some places Mayim Tachtenim could even mean the waters of the clouds, or at least the waters of the sea, and the lakes, and the rivers. Here, Mayim Tachtenim means the Mea Tahim. And then Sacham go all the way to them. So a carpet is about ascent. To Malachim Tatzilas and Terazah Dein Seif, and Yisachar means descent till the waters of the earth, until the waters of the Tehaim, beneath the earth, um, which is the antithesis of, the, of that. So the Rebbe presents us very simple. Took us about a page, more than a page. In other words, two Amudim to present us the difference between Karbones and Yisachar. That's it. We're done. Go back to the beginning of the Maimon now, which is on page. Shin Yud Dalit, please. Okay? I want to read this and pay attention to it. It's, it's not such a big Chiddush. In my class, I've talked about it many times, but I want to point it out. So let's read. The Maimah begins with the Pasuk Yitavayu, well, that it's Meish and we're going to come to the land which you're meant to settle. And you'll settle it. And then, Vasis and Meish Allah going to bring a carp. And now she interprets, Ain's it Sivu, it's not a commandment that you should come and settle the land. There are many other places where that is commanded. But rather, it's a prediction. You're going to have a feeling in your heart to make a karm. So we're going to bring a karm. And of course, some karbanas are chiyuv, some karbanas are ashur, some karbanas are 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 karbanas in it is all along with the carbon you're going to bring the nesach the libation the wine and the flour and the oil 
And the Rebbe says something interesting. The Nesachim did not begin until they came into Eretz Yisrael. And the Rebbe is going to bring four opinions about it. This is based on Chazal. This is the Rishon who speak about it as well, but the Emes is also in Chazal in footnote 2. The Nesafri and the Gemara in Zvachim and the Gemara in Kedushin. The Gemara in Kedushin I should remember. The other two I don't hold myself responsible for, but I don't remember it. And there are four opinions of what it means that Nesachim only begins when they go into Eretz Yisrael. Number one, in the dead there's no Nesachim at all. Even though it's mentioned in Chumash. And Hashem told the Meshach Rabbeinu right after the story of the spies, which is in the second year, they were not given those mitzvahs. So even though in Parshas Tetzaveh, you have Nesachim with the Karbanes, in Parshas Pinchas, you have Nesachim with the Karbanes, Meshach Rabbeinu did not give Yidin these mitzvahs because in the midbar there was no Nesachim whatsoever. Number two, that yeah, if a Jew wanted to, if a Jew chose to, there was a Nesach, but there was no obligation. Number three, only by a carbon tamid, which is described in Pashas Tetzave, was there a chiyav for Nesachim, otherwise not. Or number four, all of He had four opinions about why there's a link between the pouring of the wine and the and coming at that so Number one, they didn't have it at all. Number two, they had it, but it was not an obligation. Number three, there was on carbon tamid. Number four, there were carbonus tiber. But carbonus yachid, most people brought carbonus. Most carbonus, there was no mitzvah to do the libation. Vayinu shachi, vayinu sacham b'chol, la carbonus, the obligation to bring the point of all carbonus. is only in Eretz Yisrael dafke, and moreover, lachri ha'yirusha yeshiva. you have no obligation to pour water in this beach till after you conquer Eretz Yisrael. And you have an obligation at that point to pour wine on the Mizbeach. And after you conquer the land, you have an obligation to pour wine on the Mizbeach. Vitor, the Chlav of the Rebbe, has one question. Why is there a specific connection between the idea of Nesachem and going into Eretz Yisrael? What's the connection between the two? And of course, I already told you the answer. The answer is because there's a myth, there's an Indian from Shuv. It goes along with the Rats, so it begins with Ikim, and you didn't go into Eretz Yisrael. But Hagu Fakashe. Why didn't have it in the Midbar? Fine. So I understand that when you didn't win the Midbar, there was no Nesach, because the union of the Midbar is Ratzi Bili Shuv. I just saw the Shuv, but why didn't have it? They should have had it in the Midbar, because the Kavana is to have Ratzi Bili Shuv, the Meraglim, who didn't want to go into the Shuv, were punished. It was considered a big Aveda, their understanding of Ratzi Bili Shuv. So the question remains outstanding. So we understand that the Sochem is connected to Shuv and different to the Shuv, but why wasn't that way in the beginning? So the Shaila is what's the connection between? Shuv and Nesachim, and why is the idea of Nesachim only introduced after the beginning of the birth of the nation and not right away? So we turn back to the bottom of page Shin Tezai, number four. So we have a Mame Chazal that says there was no Nesachim in the Midbar, even though there's so many contradictions to it. In Pashas Tetzaveh, when he mentions the Vezea Shetasalem, the Karben Tomid, there's a, there's a Nesachim mentioned there. Pashas Pincha speaks about the Nesachim. Pashas Emer, which is the the beginning of the 40 years, also mentions each carbon with the with the Mincha and the Nesach. Nevertheless, they learn from this Pasuk, Kitavayu, Lerz Meishvei Seichem. And you're going to sell the land, and you're going to inhabit the land, and then you're going to bring the Mincha. That in one way or another, the Nesachah did not imply in the desert. Either they didn't play at all, or there was no obligation, or they were only on Kabbalah's Tzibur, and the most edel opinion, I guess the most edel opinions didn't apply at all. But amongst the opinions, it said that there was a concept of Nesach, it was only by the Tumit. And the Shail is why. If Nesachah are a good thing, if Nesachah are a necessary thing, bring them from the beginning. And if you don't have to bring them to the beginning, what is the connection between bringing them and going into Israel? It's almost as if we're saying, in the beginning, do not bring a Nesach. After a time, we're going to change and bring the Nesach. So, Mimanavshach. If Nesach is good, bring it from the beginning. If it's not good, why are you bringing it later? And you have to answer both sides of this question, which the Rebbe will now do. Okay, so start at the bottom of Shin Tezayin. Ubazeh. Considering what we just explained in Pedic Bays and Pedic Gimel, that Karbonus Saradatsu going up to Srafim, to Havaye, 
to the Zadain safe. And the Sachem are coming down to Oretz and to the Tehoim. We understand why when you bring a carbon, you have to have a Nesach as well. Because everything in Yiddishkeit has to consist of a Ratzu and a Shuv. The carbon is the Ratzu and the Nesach is the Shuv. Ki vajina kabonas hi halo amul matala mailo. A carbon is sacrificed to go away from this world and raise itself up to our Kodesh Baruch Hu. So first of all, it's only a half. More importantly, it's, so to speak, the wrong half. The intended purpose for creation was not to sacrifice and go up. The intended purpose ultimately is to bring God down. Down. Like it does in the Postuk, Lele Tayyub Rah, Kim Lushavid said Hashem did not create the world for chaos. Hashem created the world to be settled. Let's go to Tanya Pedic Mama Aleph, chapter 41. Well, the Altar talks about Mesidus Nefesh. And he says there's two levels of Mesidus Nefesh. The level of Mesidus Nefesh by every which Jew by which by which every Jew is holding by. And there's a higher level of Mesidus Nefesh which not every Jew is holding by. The Mesidus Nefesh which every Jew is holding by. is to sacrifice yourself, carbon. The Mesiris Nefesh, which not every Jew is holding by, is to sacrifice your sacrifice for Hashem's need. Like a son who loves his parents more than he loves himself, and he gives himself away for their interest. And in the Nimshal, this is Liach to Kuchabir Hoshanti Betachtainim, what the Abishta wants. And Abishta wants, Dirale is Barach Betachtainim. So the Mesidus Nefesh of wanting to be one with Hashem, everybody has. The Mesidus Nefesh of putting away what I want. For the Abishta wants, which is called Shuv, in the words of the Maimah, this is Tachlas Hakavono, and this is Nesachim. This is of Nesachim. So a carbon by itself is a half. Because the carbon by itself is running away from this world. It's very rewarding for us, but it's not fulfilling what the Abishta created us for. But the Chayin Sarachli is Gamin and Nesachim, which is why with the carbon you have to have a Nesach. And in Yon, of the concept of the Nesach is Amshacham, Omai Lolamata. In addition to going up and becoming one with God, you have to bring godliness down and to the lowest levels till the Tehem Shebazet Davke Davke this. The divine purpose, the supernal purpose is realized. So Aratso by itself, you know, let's talk the language of Tanya. Yeah, if you learn Tanya, you know that there's two parts to Tanya. The first part of Tanya discusses how we get out of Yiddishkeit what we want. Which is from 1 till 34. And the second is to get out of Yiddishkeit what the Ebishter wants out of Yiddishkeit. And they're very, very different. We want out of Yiddishkeit, you know, Mikhail Vishadish Kalatera Kulo, La Hagbiya, Balahala is a never shall go for Milo Milo, and Ikiva Shoshal Kam to go away from this world and connect to Akadish Baruch Hu. Asura Mikam this cattle the Shab Karbun. But the Abish is interested exactly the opposite. The Yahad Kujbi Roshante Bitahtoinim. To bring Hashem down, to be Mam Shachalukus into Mok Jomis soul, which is Kansas soul, and then she come down into this world. So these two ideas that are written in the Tanya are going to play themselves out in this Maimed in the Karban and in the Nesach. The Karban is what we want out of Yiddishkeit. To run away from this world to come attached to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the Nesach is what the Abishta wants out of Yiddishkeit. That we bring him down. So if you have a Maimed, you have Torah. Which is not just telling us what we need, but what the Abishta needs us for. In such a Torah, there cannot be a Karban without a Nesach. That's to be Ratz of Hashem. And he says... It's a very interesting dogma. <coughs> Pardon me. This Maimed that we're learning is based on the Kutatera and it's based on my mother from Semach Tzedek. The dogma that he brings, this is a fascinating dogma. This next few lines are, are, are an add on. They're a, you know, the Maimed would be just fine without them, but they offer an incredible insight. A modern insight. Listen. Hashem gave us the luchas, the tablets. And the luchas, he carved the atheists of the Senes Adibris. The first luchas were Maise Elikim and Mikhtav Elikim. Everything was done by God. 
Chorus of the Luchas was carved into the Luchas. And of course in Kabbalah you learn that the Madrig of the Luchas is Ein Seif, which is higher than Atzilas, and so on. So it says on the Luchas the words Chorus ala Luchas, and the Mishnah says in Piki Yavah, Atike Chorus Elochedus. The concept of the Luchas gives us freedom. Freedom from what? So you have three different things, which is mentioned in Medrish, in footnote 26. It's the third line from the top of Shin Yitzai. Number one, Chedus Mi Yitzit Hara. Number two, Chedus Mi Alech Hamavis. Number two, Chedus Mi Nashiba. The order of these three is fascinating. First of all, freedom from the Yitzit Hara. Second of all, freedom from death. And third of all, freedom from subordination to some other nation. It's so fascinating. Unless Shibud means to the Eibishter. So that would mean Laldinia from Yom Hamshayim Ben Chayfetz. But the Luchas had the letters carved into the Luchas. And the Chazal said, by carving the letters of the Aseris Adibis into the Luchas, we achieved freedom from Yetzir Hara, freedom from death, and freedom from enslavement. So the Rebbe says, think about this. Hine. In Yenachedus, the Torah is supposed to give us freedom. Freedom from Yetzir Hara, freedom from death, freedom from enslavement. But the Torah did not give us this freedom because it was given to us. It was given to us when it was written onto a stone, but then a chakika carved. Says The oral version of the Seres Adibris did not have this effect. When Hashem spoke the Seres Adibris, we did not become free from death and from Yetzir Hod and from Shibut. When He carved the letters into the stone and gave Moshe the stone, that's when we became free from Yetzir Hod and from Malachamovis and from Shibut. When Hashem wrote the letters of the Aseris Adibris onto the ten, two tablets, that's when we achieved Chedas. So the Rebbe says, think about it. When we heard the Aseris Adibris, we didn't become free. When He carved the Aseris Adibris into stone, we did become free. You know why? Because stone is the lowest Madrega of Asi, it's Daimim. And Daf, when you bring the Abish to down, do you have this Chedas? So the Rebbe says, Hainu, the fisha kavonehi ba'am shochal amat adavka. The intent in the Ibishta's purpose in creation is to bring godliness down. So when the Torah was brought down to the letter being etched in stone, that's when we became free. When he spoke the Torah, when he thought the Torah, when he revealed the Torah, this chedus didn't happen. Here's a raya from this Mishnah in Pirkei The way the Rebbe is nuancing it, the way the Rebbe is spinning it and emphasizing it, that freedom. True freedom happens when Torah comes down till the Madrega of Asiya and on a level of Chakika where the stone and the oasis is one and the same. Why? It's not because down is better than up. It's because this is Tachos HaKavon. It's what he wants. The Abish that wants that he should be brought down. So when we bring him down, we have this smile. And he continues, Obazed Yuvan Gam, the second Chazal Rebbe brings is directly connected to our Sugya. And he brings two Maimari Chazal, one is the both Maimari and Brachas. Number one, Kalakeri Krishna Bele Tfilin, if you read Shema, you don't put out Tfilin first, Kil Hikrav Eilab Le Mincha Vazavach Le Nesach. It's a bringing a carbon without the requisite flour and oil and without the requisite wine. You have to bring them together. Number two, Hakeri Krishna Bele Tfilin, if you read Shema without Tfilin, Kil Made Eid Shekhar, if it's saying false testimony. Now these are very different things. <laughs> Saying Shema, and by the way, this is part of the custom by Chesidim to put on Tfilin in the morning and say Min Kishma Ketana. Uh, some people put it on because they want to eat before davening, which of course the Rebbeim permitted. But um, even though Api Alocha, like Techel Al Adam, because it helps you daven, like the Loshan for the Rebbe Marash, Bess said, Essence Lidim Davin, then Davin Lidim Essence. But even people don't eat before davening and don't drink before davening, put on Tfilin. Because if you're going to daven after Zman Krishma, so you have to say Krishma in the morning, and that Krishma in the morning is a day, I say, and there's a chiv of saying Krishma with tefillin, call a kade, Krishma with tefillin, two things. Number one, say a karma without a mincha and a zadok without a nesach. Number two, made edith shekir biyatsmi. Now, one sin, two liabilities, one wrong, I did Krishma without tefillin, two liabilities. Number one, say I brought a karma without a mincha. And number two, like I said, false witness. Now that's, those two things are so far apart. Saying false witness is one of the worst things. It's considered from the Hamudis. And uh, not bringing a mincha with a carbon is, 
Okay, it's not a good thing, but you're not going to say that you're a false witness. How do these two come together? So the Rebbe says, if you'll, if you'll understand what it means, Krishna, without film, you'll see that a carbon without a mincha and false witness are exactly the same thing. And he explains it very practically. Listen. It says the Rebbe like this. Nimtza, I am six lines from the end of the first paragraph on Shin Yudzai. Now, I, I read the Maim at how I wanted to read it. I read it a little bit different the way it's written. I started by reading both my Mother Chazal and this. They're both self-contained statements. Now I want to explain how the two Chazal go together. Karbon is belin nesachim, a carbon without a nesach, which is the same thing as Kishma without filling, is kamei eid shekes, false witness. Why? Why in yenu? Dehin ya karbon is hoi b'mikdash u'mishkan. The whole of the karbon is that they brought in the physical sanctuary. And the physical sanctuary is mishkan eid, it's a place that tells witness. In other words, Shenyan who edus li Yisrael shashchin is shaded behem. The base of mikdash is approved that the Eved lives in this world, and specifically the Eved that lives in the world amongst the Jewish people. Right? It's the old the pasuk la Hashem ha'ored some leya. So you ask the question rhetorically, you ask the question simplistically, you ask the question profoundly. The question is always the same: Is the Eved the boss of this world, or is he not? And if he is, let him stand up. You know, I once heard an atheist say, if I'll believe in God. They should reveal Himself. And it's a very good tide. Who is God? Ayelakeya. Is the Abish the boss of this world or not? And of course, of course, He is. And we're witnesses to that. We, the Jewish people, are witnesses of the Abish of the Balabais of this world. And specifically the Beis Hamikdash, the physical space of the Beis Hamikdash where the Shekhinah was revealed, was a witness that this world is, belongs to HaKadosh Baruch. But in order for this world to be a witness that the Shekhinah is shaded by Yisrael, it has to come down to the physical world. V'kivan. Whereas, The whole point is not to say that Hashem is the boss of the higher worlds. The whole point is Hashem is the boss of this world. And He's the boss of this world because in our life, in our reality, the Ebesh is a balabayis. So what has to happen down here? And a carbon without an Eisach is trying to run away from this world. So a carbon without an Eisach is like Krishna without filling. It's called, it's halo, halo, lam shacha, leaving this world without a sense that you want to come back down into this world. You see, the idea is, leaving this world without a sense of coming back into this world means you don't really believe that God is the boss. You know, the, what did the Meraglim say? You can't be from in Israel. Impossible. It's too hard. And of course, what did, the, what did Yeshua and Kalev answer? If you can't be a Jew in Israel, you shouldn't be a Jew any place. If the Abish is a balabos, he can be do whatever he wants, wherever he wants. And if he can't do whatever he wants, wherever he wants, then he's not really a balabos. So who are you worshipping? That's the Eid the What is the limit of Hashem's power? And of course, the answer is there is no limit to Hashem's power. The lack of limit to Hashem's power doesn't show itself in powerful things that he does. Is that you see that he's a balabos on this earth in the physical world and in each aspect and in Karbonis it's represented by the Nesach L'chein therefore in yana Karbonis alay Nesach when you bring a Karbon which is sacrifice and there's no libation it's halal layam shachu you believe that you can have a relationship with God by leaving this world but you don't believe you can have a relationship with God by bringing Him into this world Varaya there is no Nesach who in yana Eid Shachu it's false witness how is it false witness because you're basically saying Hashem's power is limited which is exactly what the Meraglim said his power is limited. You can be a Jew in the desert. You can't be a Jew in the real world. Which is why the carbon must have a libation. The carbon has to come along with what's poured on the Mizbeach. Which is Amshach. Allah Mata mean God lean his down. And the Rebbe finishes the first paragraph on page Shin Yudayim with the words, Shebazeh dafke, dafke this, nishlemes akavana, yeno, you fulfilled the supernal purpose, which is making a dira leyes barach betachtein. So, these two statements, if you say Shema without Tefillin, it's like you bring a karma without an Esach. And saying Shema without Tefillin is false witness is exactly the same thing. False witness means the Abish's power is limited. What is the nature of the limit of his power? He's great up there. Down here it's Hefke Petrishke. Like Tayin said, Lezdin Velazdayin, Rachman Litzlan. And the Nesach is saying, no, 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 no. With the Krishma comes Tefillin. The Krishma is Ratsu, the Tefillin, the Shuv, this world can be and will be the Abishness, period. Ratsi Vashev. Which is why, when you say Krishmi, you should wear film, which the Rebbe is going to explain to us now in Pedic Dalit. 
And when you bring a carp, you should bring a nesach, like the Rebbe explained to us in the earlier prak. Okay? Let's now begin Patek Dalit. Ubir ha'inyin, Baved Yisad, let's explain it in Avoid. Hinei. We just said before, kol ha'kei krishma b'lei tefillin, krishma without tefillin, is eile b'lei mincha v'zevech b'lei nesach, which means that krishma is like a carbon, sacrifice going up, and the film is like a nesach bringing the Ebishta down. How? So the Rebbe is going to explain Krishma at length and fill in much more but Kitsit. But the bottom line is he's going to show that Krishma is the idea of Mesidus Nefesh and film represents mitzvah to bring the Ebishta down. So we're on page Shin Yud Zayin by the number 7 in your text. Ha'in Yin Bezev says the Rebbe the Pshat is Kriya Shema is Halo. Krishma means going up and going away from this world. Sharin Yin Krishma Pasukarish the preeminent Pasuk Krishma is the first Pasuk. Shema Yisro, Adino Yaleheinu, Adonai Echad, the Yid declares, Achtas Hashem. And by the day, the Sarei Shein, and by Maspik, Pasuk Zebelvad, way back when, in the times of the Shas, all you had to say was the first Pasuk. Yachakach, and then later on, by the day, the Sacharedim, saying the first Pasuk alone wouldn't give you a chance to get there. And therefore, you have to say many things before. And after, right? You say the whole Krishna, but you also say, Birches Krishna, and then Psukei De Zimra. So they were skinu laimer atchil berches krishma. First, they made a chetakon to say berches krishma. Then they saw that wasn't enough to make a chetakon to say psuke de zimra. These are separate mitzvahs. Berches krishma goes with krishma. Psuke de zimra is a separate union, and they were all put together into one continuum. Haydaa psuke de zimra berches krishma and krishma and shmenesra. And the reason they had to be joined together is to allow us to achieve the idea of Havaya Echad. V'achshav hinigam zein, in Maspek, nowadays it's not even enough to say P'suket de Zimbe Berchaz Yishma Krishma, you have to have even more. Which is the Spondos, Kedem Matfila, contemplate Godliness before davening to bring it into a mindset of Mesidus Nefesh. So Shema Yisrael, which now is preceded by Berchaz Krishma, and then preceded by P'suket de Zimbe, and then later yet preceded by his Bondos and Pnimis Atero, Tachos Amachov and He. The point of all the prerequisite steps is Shagia leading Shema Yisrael, which should come and touch the Madrig of Shema Yisrael. I know this means that first you say Psukhe de Zim and Psukhe de Zim, talking about Gadlos Havaya Shabir Salem as the greatness of God in the world, right? So the difference between Psukhe de Zim and later is Psukhe de Zim is what God does for me on the worldly level. Birchas Krishma, Krishma, and Krishma itself is what God does for me on the higher levels and what God is all by Himself. So you go gradually. Psukhe de Zim is Chikibi Bechutz. Birches Krishma, he doesn't say it in the Maimah, but Lachai does a Chikimi Bifnim. And he says that Birches Krishma not only is about God in the world that elevates the godly soul and the animal soul. Vesheresh Nafsh Elakisu, Vesheresh Nafsh Abahamis. And it's Poyal Allah Nefesh Elakis, Val Nefesh Abahamis. And I, I'm curious why he brings Nefesh Elakis, Lachai does a Chidish as Nefesh Abahamis, right? It says in my Mari Chasidis that the first Baruch of Krishma which deals with the Malachim. Is because the shadish of the Nefesh Abahamis of a Yid is the Malachim. And we talk about the Malachim because we're trying to trigger the Nefesh Abahamis to relate to its source. And just like the source of the Nefesh Abahamis desires godliness, the Nefesh Abahamis down here should also desire godliness. But the Rebbe insists that the Nefesh Alakis is also involved. Moreover, he puts Nefesh Alakis first. Because Lachayda, you could say that the first Baruch of Krishna, which is about the Malachim, is Nefesh Abahamis. The second Baruch of Krishna, Ava Salem, Beis Yisrael, Amcha, Ahofta. Um, this is about Nesham Es Yisrael. Here he says Nefesh Elikis first and Nefesh Elikis second. And by the way, in footnote 35, he's been signed to Teres Chaim. I did not look up the Teres Chaim. I'm curious what this Tziyun is. And perhaps it's addressing this question. The bottom line is, in Pesuk HaDizim, we talk about the Guf, what Hashem did for us lately. And the Birches Kishma, we talk about the Guf and the Nefesh Abahamis. And he says about the Nefesh Abahamis and Nefesh Elikis. Shishneim Yachtov, that they join together. They become one. And they say Shema Yisrael. That not only the godly soul Shema Yisrael, the animal soul says it alone. Not only the animal soul Shema Yisrael, the divine soul says it with them. They join together. And he translates each word. Number one, Shema. The word Shema means to collect. Lashon Asif, it says in the Pasuk Vishama, Shol Es Om. Asif is called Akechaz Vachushim, gather together all of your faculties and all of your senses. All parts of the person, which include Nefesh Lukis and Nefesh Bahamis, are joined together in the declaration of Shema Yisrael. And of course, we all know the famous story, which is in Lukas Yisrael. That the Friedrich Rebbe's namesake, the Beis of Yitzhak Avrucher, Married the daughter of Rebecca Solcher Kasset, who was the son of the Chedabel Rebbe and the Shvaga, the Mittel Rebbe, Vachuli Vachuli. And 
the Cherkasa's sheet it was that it happened quickly. Not to give the Yitzhahara a chance. Chabad, the sheet is happening slowly, like the Moshe from the Baal Shem Tev, that when the Ganev is in the wagon, you stop the wagon, you beat him up and you push him out and then you go right there. So the Cherkasa wanted the Avrucha to daven with a minion, and the Avrucha wanted to daven like Chabad. So the father-in-law asks the son-in-law, How do you behave when it comes to davening? So the Avrucha said, I make every ebbet daven betzibur. Betzibur could mean a minion. But he didn't mean a minion. <laughs> anyway, he davened all day long. So Shver called him, he said, you daven betzibur. He says, yeah, I like to gather all my pieces together. And when all the different pieces of me, wherever they're scattered, are joined, then all of me davens to the Abish. The Tamam Yelel Ratzim, like it says in the Rechmet Tzachat, in Abbas Yisrael. And the word Shema means the same thing, to collect. Collect all your different pieces, join them all together, and then you're able to declare, Adi Shem Alakein Hashem Achod. Five lines into Shein Tchas HaKerach, as it comes from Yisrael. The power to collect the godly soul, and the animal soul, and the body, and everything else that we possess, into a unity that can declare Adi Shem Alakein Adi Shem Achod, comes because we are Yisrael. The Yisrael Olam Machshav, he didn't come from the Abish, this thought from the highest levels. And since we come from the Abish, this thought, which is the highest levels, so, considering how high our source is, even when the neshama comes into this world, since it comes in such a high level, it still has the power. Let's say for the kabbat, it's called the kechaz to collect everything together. The CD, if you look in Yer Satshuva, Peter Galit, all creations are created through Shem Elikim and through Dibur. And the neshama is all created through Yipach. Here he says Machshava. The bottom line is the fact that the neshama is such a high shade it allows it to have such a great influence on the world. So Shema means to collect all the different parts of yourself. Yisrael with the Koyach that comes from being rooted in the highest levels of godliness. And when you collect all yourself, all of yourself together from this high level, you're able to declare Adi Shem Alikeinu. What does that mean? It's ten lines into page in Ches. Shabachin has Havaya, the level of Havaya, which is Lamay Lame Ishtal Shasam Lalem, the Shem Yudke Vavki is above Ishtal Shasam, above the world. Because over here we don't mean Havaya Loshon Mahave, we mean Havaya Loshon Hoya Hoya Vavaya, as godliness as above worldliness. And we say Havaya Lekenu, we don't say Havaya Lekim, Lekenu Unzer God. Kechenu Vachayasenu, our energy, our life. Beli Hamamut of the Shem Lekim. A Lekim does not stand in between Havaya and Lekenu. We live directly from Shem Havaya. So Shema, you're able to gather all of your pieces together with the Kech of Yisrael and announce that Havaya Lekenu, I live from Gilead Lekus. Because who the power for a in this world to announce that even though he lives in Elam Azeh, Havaya is his chayis, ain't safe is his chayis, is the fish, it's all Allah Machshav come from Hashem's thought. And therefore, even the Kalim and the root is Primius HaKalim. Now, these words, Bechinus HaKalim, Shosh Primius HaKalim, the Chayim means that Neshama Yisrael come from Primius HaKalim, not from Chitanius HaKalim. I mean, the way I understand it from the Geras Hachuva, the the uh, world is created from chitzenius of chitzenius akelim, including the malachim. The shamas are created from pnimius of chitzenius akelim. Mitzvahs are from chitzenius of pnimius akelim, and ages are tater are pnimius of pnimius akelim. This is how I understand it based on the ayin base, but it's been probably twenty-five years since I learned it. Twenty years since I learned it, or so, the last time. But neshames, even though they're connected to kelim, but they're connected to the idea of kelim, which is in a state of bittel. So the real source of Nishamis is the Abish just thought. The manifest source of the Nishamis is from Kalim but from Pnimius Akel. And therefore the Nisham which is Pnimius Akel has a great bitl takadish barhu called Yisrael that allows it to say the Shamali Kain. Or Pnimius Akeli Vesakas Gumura Ma'id, it says in Khasidis that the inner aspect of the Kalim is very one with the light. Ham Islavish be clear, not like a Seder Sakili, which is Dovid er, which is not so Dovid Echad Ram Islavish. This is a very complicated sugya. The sugya of Pnimi Sakeli and Khitani Sakeli, the concept of Kalim versus Lavushim, and the concept of Kalim Lavushim versus Hecholis, and then of course the concept of Vatsilas versus Bya. But these are all details. The Rebbe here mentions enough details to confuse us, but not so many details that we have to actually stop the mind and analyze it. The bottom line is Nishomis come from Akshova, and they come from when as much as they come from Kalim, they come from Pnimi Sakelim. And therefore, they're in a position to say, Shema Yisrael of the Shem Alekeinu. And we feel the chain, therefore, Hinyah Shem Alekeinu, Leim Mutsoyim, that we, as we live physically in this world, live from Shem Avayim. But then we say, the Shem Achod, 
What does Hashem Echad mean? The only will that a person desires is Hashem Echad Bulvad. So there's a lot of translations to Havaya Echad, right? And Rashi says, Hashem Elokeinu Be'el Mazeh, Hashem Echad to the whole world, lost in love. Here we talk to the Hashem Elokeinu, we live from Shem Havaya. And Hashem Echad, the only thing that interests us is Havaya. So all of the preparatory stuff, there's Barnos Kedem Atfila, and they don the 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 brachas of Baruch Shalom and Yishtabach and the Pesukah de Zimna and the brachas before Krishna and Krishna. They're all leading to the establishment, to the announcement, Shema Yisrael Adinoy Eleheinu Adinoy Echod, which means you gather all of your pieces together and you assert that we live from godliness itself and the only interest we have is godliness. So it all leads up to Krishna. And the Rebbe's point is that Krishna is Ratu. It's going away from this world and attaching ourselves to HaKadosh Baruch. The Cholze Poyal number 9 on page Shin Yiches, all of this effect, there should be that we should love Hashem with all our heart and all our soul and all of our strength. And L'chayra, this is Ratz, but let's leave it. And it brings in the second Pasha of Krishna. It begins with the Pasha, but look at the words that the Rebbe focuses on. That we're not talking about a Jew in Beis Medrash or in Shul. And it's only reality is Tere Veda, and he is out in the world. And he's busy with Panos of us after the Ganecho, he's collecting grain. So the Pasuk says, he shamru lechem pen yifta levavchem vesartem vavaladem lekem achedem. And he observes. Pen yifta levavchem means there's a possibility that you can have a bad thought. Vesartem vavaladem lekem achedem, you become a pagan. There's a very big difference between a bad thought and being a pagan. Says the Rebbe, there are some people who are so refined that the bad thought is defined by them as already being a pagan. And that's how you read this puzzle. How do you margish? A person feels because he's so sensitized. It's seven lines from the bottom of Shinchas to godliness through the declaration of Shema Yisrael Hashem Lekeinu Hashem Echod. Shaf Shari is the Penyifta Levavachem. The possibility of being seduced in a negative direction, he Bishova Mamish Im is exactly the same as. And worshiping other gods. One thought that's not consistent with Aksa Hashem is equal to Avedah Zara Mamish. I know this means. It gets If the only thing I care about is godliness and I turned away from godliness even one drop, itself. In other words, a person who's really tuned into Aksa Hashem intellectually and emotionally and spiritually understands that when it comes to Nyanam of Achtos, the slightest chesodin is the same as Aved Azor. Dehinei. Ked mamid Shema Yisrael. Before you said Shema Yisrael, derech ish yosho be'enev. Everybody likes himself. And if you like yourself, after you yosho be'enev, maybe it's take it. Deserve to be liked. But if you like yourself, you'll say, this is a small Aved and this is a big one. A machshev is chutz meila. I wasn't Aved Aved Azor. I didn't speak to her that I thought. But... If you did the Shema with the Koyach of Yisro and the Shema Lekeinu and the Shema Chod so you realize if in reality there's nothing but HaKadosh Baruch Hu if you make a move in front of a king it's Hebech HaChai it's a death If you say Krishna correctly by the time you get to the Yisham Rulachem simply thinking a thought that's not good is equal to Avi Dezara Mamish and the motivation for all of this is the Shema Yisro. And he explains, last line on Shrit Chaz Vahainu. Lif ne Kriyashma, if you haven't said Krishma yet, Adai in Lahoya, Kami Malka, you are not yet standing in front of the king. So you could think that Pen Yifte and Vesarte Mishne and Yonim, a bad thought and worshipping idols are not in the same world. Avakash Margesh Avayechod, if you achieved a real sense of Ein Eid Milvad, the Avaya Echad means that the only interest they have is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ubemeil, and as I say, HaGosha, the after Shem Lekecha, B'chol Levav, B'chol B'chol Levav, B'chol Meidecha. And you love Him infinitely, as I Ein Nafkemina, you reach a point of Edelkeit, where you do not separate Bein Yifte or Bein Vesart, between thinking about thought and doing Avaya Dezara Mamsh. So we had a whole page, a very nice page, right? He explained, first of all, the need for his Bonanus Kei de Matfila, very quickly. But he went through all of these points. His Bonanus Kei de Matfila, Psuka de Zimbe, which speaks about Hashem for Dasmi in this world. Birches Krishna, which is rallying the Nevesh Kis and the Nevesh Bahamas, because the Nevesh Bahamas is Shadish to want HaKadosh Baruch. And then Kriya Shema, 
which is to collect all parts of ourselves, with the Koyach of Yisrael, and to say, Avaya Lekeinu, that we live from Shem Avaya, and to say, Hashem Echol, we have no interest except for godliness, and therefore we love Him to the point of Bechol Mo'edecho, and then we have the Hisham Rulachem Pen, Yifta Levavchem Vesart, that the smallest infractions like Avedah Zora. But now the Rebbe concludes, Shin Yutes, four lines into the page of Nimtza. The point of all this is, that Klolo Se'inyan de Krishma, Krishma as a whole, is Allah v'hayetzia megeder akelem. It's about running away from this world. Connecting to Hashem by getting out of here. Like Shema Yisrael, Hashem Alakein, Hashem Echad, you raise yourself up so high that the Havai Echad, the only interest is God. V'lochein, are they z'dukma t'inyan karbonas, it's kampal to karbonas, which is concept of Allah. It's an incredible spiritual experience, running away from this world and running to God, sacrificing oneself to God. It's It's incredible. And of course, it involves sacrifice. It's just missing one component. And the word that is important to remember when you're talking about this final component is the word purpose. What Hashem wants you for. And this you have to have to fill. Hashem didn't create us to run away, He created us to bring Him here. Om Lam, however, to fill in is Hamshacha. Is that along with the Messias Nevesh of Krishna, we have to bring Hashem down. Harin, you're not feeling is what's feeling she'ais na pashas de krish mesh aim dem bedibur that you don't just speak the words of Shema, but you write them down basis aksav written words de la klaf gashmi, just like we said two pages ago on shin yud zayin, that the idea of chedus came from carving the aseles and dibers into stone. We're now saying that we bring the abish to down not by saying krish but by writing it down on parchment, which is amshachas adishem echad lamata bringing the akdashem into this world, which is the purpose. So you have to say Krishna with tefillin, meaning to say that as much sacrifice as you're having when you're saying Shema, the point of it is, the end of all is, the primius of it is, the tachas namatara of all it is, to bring Hashem into the world. And of course we all know that the union of Krishna and Shemineser is Ratzay and Shev, but we learned this last summer, when I gave the classes on the beginning of Shei Mitzat Tefillah. So the whole point is and Yaidim Krishma is like a sacrifice, running away, and fill every brach of the different kavana because you're bringing the Abishta down. And it's weird, why? Shminas is higher than Krishna, and yet Krishna is Ratha Shminas is Shuv. Because the highest Indian is not running away from this world. And connecting to Baruch Hu, the highest of in this world is taka bringing the Abishta down. So the Rebbe says, after one ascends in Krishna, you say, When you're daven, you're creating a new will, and the whole point of this new will is that it shouldn't remain supernal, it should be manifest. A new will of HaKadosh Baruch should come into the physical world to change it physically. Of course, the famous question, and this is how the Yigeres HaKedish Kuntesach and Hov Masha Kosli B'Pri Chaim opens with the idea of davening being hard and tayed and tefillah because davening actually physically changes the world. A person was sick and he davened and he's healthy. A person is poor and he's davened and he's rich. You don't have that in Teira. You don't have that in Mitzvah. You only have it in tefillah. But it has to be tefillah in the Madrege of Esim Esen Eshel Mokim. Madrege B'chol Meidecha. That tefillah is a Mam Shech Hashinah Yom Hazah B'Pashtetz or B'Gashmiyaz. But the bottom line is Shmenesre is the highest level of davening and its greatness is expressed in the fact that we're physically affected with Parnosa and with Gezund and Allah Gutezah. Shait. So the Rebbe spent a page plus explaining Krishna being Ratsu and ten lines explaining Tefillin being Shuv and he connects it to Shmenesre of course. But don't let the longer discussion on Kriyashma and the shorter discussion on Shmanesa let on Tfilin let you think that one is more important than the next. It's the combination. Krishna is Ratsu in all of the steps that he listed, and uh, Tfilin is Shuv in all of the importance of that. For the same reason the Gemara says which call Tera Kula Tfilin, all of Tayl is compared to Tfilin, and this means call a mitzvah shabatera. The mitzvah shabatero, because every mitzvah's idea is I'm shachalamat. It's not just tefillin, but all the mitzvahs that are comparable to tefillin, the holy in his last slay is bodech, did it him to bring the Abish down into this world. So Krishna and tefillin is Ratzi Vishuv. And Karban and Nezer is also Ratzi Vishuv. Which leads us back to our original question. 
why when the Abishta gave us the Torah originally and he gave us the mitzvah of Karbonus did he say no Nesach no Nesach at all no mitzvah in Nesach only for Karbonus but only for Karbon Tamid what's the game if it's good do it all right away and if it's not good why do it later and the Rebbe is now going to address this question Hedik hey when the slip shot in the post, you will let it make face a and you come to the land which is supposed to settle. And then you bring an Esach. That he of Anasachim, the obligation to pour wine on the Mizbeach that should go down to the sheet and into the to him, is first of all in Israel, not in Chutzlaret. And second of all, only Laache, Yerusha, Yeshiva, after they conquer it and settle it. Because in the midway there was Karban and Salon. Why? In Yen Hamid, but the life in the desert, which was the holiest and purest life, but it's Hepecha, it's Yashos, Shoch. It's not about the world, it's about God. And that's the concept of the Mid, but which is Eretz Siyah She'ein Bamoyim. There's no life there. Because in Yen of Mayim is Amshoch, and the Mid is Halor. Now, the Midbar, when the Yidin were there, was an incredible place, right? Vashtet Chazal, that Kol Mokim, wherever they rested, even they rested with Api Hashem Yachin, Api Hashem Yisrael, was a Kvius, because it was Api Hashem. They stayed one day. In a place that had dinner with Rosh Hashanah and Day, because Api Hashem. So there was something very permanent about the time they spent in the Midbar, but it was desert esque. It was Ratzibali Shuv. And the Rebbe says, the Zu, I say, I'm tired of Samar Agla. That's a story with the spies. That why did they say that also? Because they looked at what they had. The Midbar was a world where they were literally and figuratively surrounded by clouds. Food came from heaven, water came from Iraq. Their clothing was naturally ex- stretched and freshened. Why would they want to go into Tassel and become farmers? Or as they say it in the fancy agriculturalists. Because they were in a state of Allah. And the Midbar is a place of Allah. Therefore, in the Midbar, the carbon was brought. Because the carbon represents Ratsu. But the Nasek represents. Shuv was not brought in the midbar. So in the midbar there was no nesachim because their life was ratzi In other words, they didn't have nesachim in the midbar because they didn't serve Hashem on a level of nesachim. They had only ratzi belishuv. The whole world was lenitna teira el leich leaman. They only busy studying teira. They were removed from the world. They had no need for the nesachim, so they didn't bring the nesachim. And of course, you know the Rebbe Sicha. Now it says in the Gemara there's two days about it, but one of the days is day ramid be'en l'mchelik le'el mabo. The generation, I'm sorry, Deir HaMidba, Deir HaMidba, not the Deir HaMabo. Deir HaMidba, the generation of the Jews in Deir HaMidba, Deir HaMidba, Deir HaMidba, Why? Because they don't want to go into Yisrael. So Chassidus explains, because we hold, the Ramban holds, the Tachas Aschad is Gashmias. And they wanted Ruchnias. So Elam Habo, which is about the reward or the experience of bringing Hashem into Gashmias, was something they did not design, they didn't earn it. And of course, the Rebbe right away adds that Deir HaMidba, Eng Lam Chelik Elam Habo by themselves. But because of Meishan Abayin was Rabban Shal Yisrael, but Yikpor Eisei Bagai Moshe does not go into Eretz Yisrael. He remains with his generation. He Layazev Tei Marisa, and of course he certainly has Elam Haba, because he was Mechaba Ves Haaretz. He schleps along his whole generation. But the Meraglim Tainet Ratzay Beli Shuv is consistent with a Kard Mordar Neisach. Avol Keshavo Eretz Yisrael. Then they came into Eretz Yisrael, and there was Yusha and Yeshiva. And they became Eretz Meishvazech in their own land. Beifin Shalos Yashvus. Baveid, the Pratzikol Achad Vechad, every individual got his peace. And each one settled his peace. Ozai Hotzachli, Yisein Yan Nesachim. That became the time for the Nesach. Fine. So we understand why in the Midbar they didn't have a Nesach. We understand why coming into Israel they didn't have a Nesach till they settled the land. The bottom line is that the argument is that they were missing something in the Midbar. You explain why they didn't have it, but they were missing it. Tzadbi says, no. Listen to this. Oklo lesa inyan who four lines from the bottom of the page and you test the answer to the question is as follows. Sheketei she yucha liyas inyan amshach in order to successfully bring the Abish into this world. So the chliyas tchil inyan Allah. You have to appreciate the need to run away from it first. Shalachem b'mid b'tchil lahoyu b'nei yisrael b'mid but while the Jews were in the desert they needed to be in the desert which is halah without amshach. This is the, not the final purpose. The Rebbe says, if you don't appreciate your desire to get out of this world, you cannot make this world into God. The famous Sikh Rebbe Kutu Sikh Chel Dal, Pekhi Yavaz Pashas Pekh Dalit, where the Mishnah says, You're forced to live and you're forced to die. So the question of the Rebbe is, if you're forced to live, you want to do the opposite of life. And if you're forced to die, that means you want to live. How can it be both? And the Rebbe said, if you don't have both drive, you have neither. 
If you don't want to go back to Hashem, you can't make a deal with Yisbarach Tachtainim. If you're not affected by Dira B'Tachtainim, you have no desire to go back to Hashem. They feed each other. So first you have to have a desire to be one with God. That sets up the possibility of asking yourself, in addition to wanting to be one with God, what does God want from me? And that sets up the Shuv, you see? And this is the answer to the question. Why in the Midbar was the no Nesachim? Because only by having no Nesach in the Midbar could they have a Nesach going in that Israel. In other words, there needs to be a period of time when the Avoid is Taka Rasei Shuv. There needs to be a period of time where all you're doing is running away from this life. Getting out of here. Connecting to Hashem. It's not the Kavano, but it sets up the Kavano. It's like, you know, to, before you go on Shlich, it's to be a Bokr and Taim Chitmimim. The Ratzai is first. And this answers both questions. There must be Nesachim. There must be Shuv. This is Takas HaKavon. Otherwise, it's made it may, may, may Sheker. But there needs to be a period when there is only Ratzu which sets up the appreciation for the Ratzu together with the Shuv. And that's why in the Midbar they had Davkin Nesachim, no Nesachim, just Karim. And in Eretz Yisrael they got the Mitzvah of Nesachim. That's the Teretz. So we asked two and a half. The question was, if Nesachim are a good thing, why did they not have in the Midbar? If they're not a good thing, why do they have them in Eretz Yisrael? And the answer is Nesachim are a good thing. If Nesachim represents Shuv, but the ability to do the shuv correctly depends on having the ratzi alone first. So the Maimir's principal point is done. The Rebbe is going to make one more point, which we're going to lead now. V'zeh ha'gama shekos of last line of page in your test. It explains the Pesach in Oishaya. Ki chef said chafas te v'lezeh v'ach te'ebi says that I want kindness, I don't want karbonus. And the free, they can explain to this, my modern, please go to page Shin Chav. The Pchefet is Pnimius Harats, which is hard than Rats and Stam. And the Pnimius Harats and Ebishter wants Chesed, Kanye is bringing Hashem into this world. In other words, the Tachas Hamachov in three lines of the page Shin Chav, the ultimate end is Chesed, Dafke, Kindness. With Zamshal Chamul Maila Lamata, bringing Hashem down, and not Zevach, which is Mulmata Lamail home. For Hainu, this means. In the beginning, it has to be exclusively Allah. When you start out your life, you have to run to HaKadosh Baruch and get away from this world. It's necessary to do this in order to be able to make later a dira le'yis barach betachtenim, but the point is not the dira, is not the ratzu, it's the shuv. The point is chesed, which is amshacha. And Dav, Kam Shacha Lamata Mata, and you bring it to the lowest levels until Shah Mokam Shain Mokam Lamata, Shain Adla Mokam Shain Lamata, and the lowest place possible, which is Amita Sinyana Ches, Hirashesh, Nam Shacha Lamata, Rakmishu Berke, you bring it below only to people who are holy. It's not true Chesed. Dav, when you bring it Lamata Mata, that's real Chesed, the example from the fact that Ramavin was Makar of the Arvi. And the same is true also Chesed Chafasi, which is a Tachos Hakavon. So the word that the Rebbe is saying is, you fulfill the Diralis Bara Patachtenu through an act of Chesed. And Rabbi Isai, I'm reminded again, I always bring up the same word of the famous letter, which is printed in the Gizkenes of the Alta Rebbe, which he wrote, Karol Uzmanus Talkusi, which begins with the words, Hanefesh Hashvela. And what the Alta Rebbe says is, that the Ebishter created a world. And before the created the world, there was a meeting between Chesed Emes, Nivgashu Emes, Amar Al Yiv, and Chesed Amar Yivra. And the Abish listened to Chesed to create the world. What kind of a Chesed? A Chesed She'ein Eshal Emes. Dira B'Tachtaynim is accomplished through bluff, but you did a good deed. Ki Zeh Kala Adam, the father of the Abish of Beshaf and Adult. You want to talk about Emes? No one is stopping you. You want to do things the Shem Shemaim? No one is stopping you. But until the Shem Shemaim stops you from doing a mitzvah, it's very counterproductive. In the beginning, there's taka ratzi, but in the end, it has to be shuv. And therefore, loy nishri yisrael b'midbar they could not stay in the midbar. The chen solars had to go into Eretz Yisrael. Or b'knisal solars, and when they came into Eretz Yisrael, then they conquered the land, and then they settled the land. This chayva b'nesach, and they became obligated to pour libations. Why on the mizbeach? Which mishtach has takavano who the ultimate end of and purpose which the Amish created the world. His last was lays but but tend to make this world and talk this barakh mamish and this is accomplished through shuv. So the Maimid explains in the midbar that we are not so alone. And the Maimid further explains that when they came into Tisra that the Biratsiv Shaif. Okay, I hope this was clear. I hope I spoke 
not too fast. And we need that Friday we're going to do, like I said before, from Tafshin Lamed Zayin. And I'm hoping next Wednesday we'll do uh, Yudbis Thomas. Thank you.